And if this is the morning where you're tuning in from, I'm impressed that you're up and ready to go to hear all about some of the natural areas at Binghamton University. So welcome everybody who's tuned in. Uh, I'm Craig Broccoli. I'm one of the Associate Directors of Admissions at Binghamton. I'll give you a little bit of an intro in just a second. Today we're going to be talking about Binghamton University's Nature Preserve in particular, one of our not so hidden gems when you really look at campus, especially from an aerial view. This is a big part of Binghamton, but more in particular, what this means to us, why it's here, and dive a little bit deeper as we explore about what it means for our future. And of course, what it could mean for you as a student who may be thinking about Binghamton. I know many of you are still in that exploration and application stage, meaning like you're looking at schools to apply to Binghamton University. It's probably on your list at this point, but there's more than just looking at the academic core when you look at a university. <laughs> Definitely looking a little further into maybe where you can go with your own passions and interests. And we live in a world where nature seems to be <laughs> ever disappearing in the way that we perceive ourselves as humans. And I think it's important when you look at Binghamton, we include people as part of nature, as we all should. Now, in our university, we have a, a reserve in the sense of where we are preserving what was developed over time and now became our nature preserve. And we'll get into what this really means in just a second. But I just want us to kind of come together in some level of excitement that we have a core here at Binghamton that has kept us steady and is also giving us a, a platform to grow into the future and more of a regenerative style of thought. Now, that will hopefully mean a little bit more to us all not too long from now. So again, my name is Craig Broccoli. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Binghamton University. I'm technically based in New York City these days, so I, I represent Binghamton in lower New York. I grew up in the Hudson Valley, but went away to college at Binghamton University to study mechanical engineering and business for graduate school. The fact that we had this nature preserve actually was one of those key little moments in my uh, college exploration days. I was like, hmm, that's odd. And I haven't seen another university that had this large of a chunk of land that's integrated into their campus life. That's a natural world. So I, I did truly enjoy that. I, I lived on campus all four years and a couple of those years uh, where I lived was right on the border of the nature preserve, which was beautiful to wake up in the morning and see, especially this time of year, as you can see in the photo behind me, that fall foliage. So this is an area that I, I truly, truly enjoyed and still am mesmerized by. Joining us today uh, is actually an expert in the natural areas here at Binghamton. We have Dylan Horvath, and, and I'll let him introduce himself in just a second. And my colleague, Justin, he, he let us know that he's going to go on a hike this morning, beautiful morning to do that. So he'll be tuning in. Justin Brim, he, he works in our admissions office, and he's, he's come to Binghamton. He's been at Binghamton for many years now, but he grew up, I believe, in Brooklyn, moved around, has been in the upstate New York area for a little bit now, and one of his favorite things is just being able to embrace this natural world as well. So we'll hopefully get some live footage as we go through this. So Dylan, would you want to introduce yourself and your role with Binghamton? I'm fairly, I'm in a fairly unique position called the uh, steward of natural areas. And um, it was a position created about 15 years ago. Um, I was a graduate student at Binghamton and I volunteered in the nature preserve with um, the professors who were in themselves volunteering out there. And uh, I left for a few years, and then they invited me to come back because I was showed I was so interested in it. But um, they created the position, and, and amazingly, I'm the first one to do it. So, um, but, yeah, I try to involve students in everything I do. So we have uh, volunteers, friends of the H-Preserve. We have uh, weekly volunteers. Usually, <laughs> this semester is a little different, of course. Um, and I train students to be nature guides out there. Um, so all sorts of, there's all sorts of ways to get involved out there for students. 
Yeah, and that's I know when I was a student there, I remember crossing paths with you, and I was like, this guy must know everything about this nature preserve because you're always doing a nice little talk, telling students about what they're seeing, what they're looking at, and it's it's good to know that you have that level of passion and expertise. I'm going to share screen quickly and bring us into some more of a, a visual light here of the nature preserve. So hopefully you all will be able to see this. And as I mentioned, and when you look at Binghamton from an aerial perspective, we're a pretty green campus. Now, yes, and we're in the southern tier of upstate New York, and we have a lot of natural areas surrounding us. But if you look at that rolling hillside, right behind uh, that line of buildings, those clusters of buildings are, those are some of our residential communities where you would live on campus. But that rolling hillside behind it, that, that's our nature preserve. But that's not the only areas of natural areas on campus. And I'll, I want to give you all a, a quick little quiz. Those of you tuning in right now, if you take a moment to write in the chat box, how many acres of natural area does Binghamton University, is, is Binghamton University built on? So how many na acres of natural area do we have within our campus boundaries? It looks like many of you got close to what is the nature preserve total, our formal nature preserve with about between 180 and 200 acres, 930 acres. Good guess. I see that coming through. That's the total campus. So I wish 930 acres was considered natural area. Um, maybe if we put some green roofs on, we, we can get closer to that. But actually, Dylan, you want to tell us what the total number is? It's about 600 acres. So about two thirds of campus is in a natural state, which is amazing and fairly, yeah. really unique. Yeah, and that's something that I think as a campus, it's interesting because as we grow as a university and we have been pretty rapidly growing over the last, especially the last 15, 10, 15 years, we've been committed to preserving as much as we can and when adding to campus and when adding to our boundaries there, a lot lately has come in on the natural side and that's some of our newest additions like Nuthatch Hollow and, and the adjacent lands to that. So yes, very good guesses on this. And now, Oh, hey, Justin is just tuning in right now. Hey, Justin. Hey everybody. How's it going, Craig? How's it going, Dylan? It's cold. Good. Well. We're, we're just talking to a bunch of students about the, the total size of our nature preserve. Yeah. I was going to say, speaking of, acreage and areas i'm just going to share i'm on the marsh trail right now i'm on the trail right now just taking a hike good thing i don't have to wear a mask because i'm a little out of breath i was doing a little a little jog i saw somebody walking with their husky so i made sure to you know put my mask on but <laughs> most part <laughs> um yeah nice area just showing you some you know there's some ponds and such yeah they, i mean one of the things that uh, when you're walking through this nature reserve, you're always surrounded by different types of scenery. And I, I could tell you're on a, a nice trail right now, a lot of young trees. I think sometimes when we think about nature preserve, yeah, that's that's awesome, Justin. If you get close to some of those, do you see any good fall foliage there? I'm trying to see. I know you're in the shady part, and you're going to probably right. get closer to, oh, yeah, some of the the, the – aquatic areas on campus. Yes, yeah, so this is yeah. a, a old beaver trail off the main marsh trail. And it's become a, a good place for people to walk out and see this. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So yeah. beavers made this trail originally. Yep. And straight ahead, there's a uh, beaver lodge. And then to the left is actually one of the first beaver dams that create our wetlands. That one's probably about 100 feet long or so. There's, we actually have a 400, probably a 450-foot-long beaver dam out there. Wow. I remember there's four, there's four giant beaver dams. It's amazing. <laughs> I remember seeing a, a beaver and somebody walking a dog uh, seemed to go face-to-face, -face and the dog backed away from the beaver. The beaver was massive. Yep. And that's one of those interesting pieces of the wildlife that you'll see back there. Justin, thank you for showing us uh, 
keep us tuned in on your hike. If you get to another spot, just come back in live, and we'll, we'll come to you, all right? I will. Happy to do so, listening in. So, once again, welcome, everybody, and so uh, it's good to go. A nice Saturday morning going for a jog. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Yeah, staying fit. I, I appreciate that. All right. Now, I'm going to bring you back to this, the visuals here, because I think one of the things that as a, a university is, that's growing, yes, we're a relatively young university, this nature preserve has been part of our core. Now, when you look at the natural areas of the upstate New York area, it's hard to say um, when you come to a university like Binghamton, you, part of the reason why you'd be going there is because we're not a urban campus and because we're not a just a suburban campus. Yes, there is the city of Binghamton down the road and yes, we're in the rolling hills of that city of Binghamton, but we're built into the natural landscape. The acreage of the nature preserve, as some of you got very close to guessing of the specific nature preserve is about 180 acres. That's where Justin's on his hike right now. But uh, Dylan, if you don't mind, do you want to shed some light on the history of where this came about and how we have what we have right now called the nature preserve? Right. So um, I usually have a really big story for this, but uh, basically in the late sixties, this land had been there um, just kind of surrounding the, the, the campus and the university was actually going to uh, fill in the wetlands and create athletic fields and um, parking lots out there. But people liked the area and especially students liked the area. And it said, and there's pictures of it, that students actually laid down in front of the bulldozers and um, their protest actually led to the creation of the nature preserve itself in 1970. So students, super, super important. The um, the the care and the, the respect by students of the preserve is, is what preserves it. <laughs> it preserves our preserve. <laughs> Yes, I, and I was just hearing from one of our professors. Uh, we, we had started a, a newer learning community. I'm going to do a talk about learning communities very shortly, right after this at 11 o'clock today. But uh, the talk was about one of our learning communities called Environmental Action. Um, and this is a new learning community where students can live together and, and focus in areas that they're passionate about and you looking at the world from – a level of solution where we have problems, how can we come up with some solutions? And they're particularly concerned about sustainability and taking action to preserve the environment that we live in. But in particular, these students are focused on this year, this semester on food justice, but they have, they live in college in the woods, one of our learning, uh, one of our residential communities that borders the nature preserve. And they've spent some good time over the last few weeks uh, as students are there embracing nature to make sure that Nature stays nature in the sense that anytime if somebody walked through and didn't necessarily have the, the direct concerns and, and care to con conserve or not to infringe too much on the nature, meaning leaving trash behind or any of that sort, they're active in, in making sure we can keep this land natural. So it's, it seems like it's always been there as part of our Binghamton student mindset, but even more so as years go by that students are finding other ways to embrace with this beautiful natural scenery. Now, I, I want to encourage you as students to think beyond just escape here. I want you to, if you could put in the chat, maybe some thoughts what the natural areas at a, on a college campus may mean to you. It could be anything from research, maybe thinking down the road, just a place to relax and connect with the natural world. Just what are some thoughts that come to mind when you think of a nature preserve? Balance. Yes, that's a great word. This is an area that you certainly can find some balance within our natural ecosystems and in your own human mind here. Yeah, a place that protects nature from human harm. I saw that, that come through. Calming, a place to go and recharge and reset. Seems like you're, you know what's coming in college, right? A lot of deep thought, a lot of, you know, maybe academic stress at times. You're, you're pushing yourself outside your, your comfort zone, but this would be an excellent place to sort of escape that for a little bit and, and recharge and reset. Hi again, Wait, everybody. Relax. Oh, Justin. Yes, keep those coming into the chat. Justin, where are you at right now? Let me, let me switch. I'm approaching. 
I'm approaching the bridge. All right, we're going to switch to your screen right now so we can get a closer look. Oh, one of my favorite spots here on the Nature Preserve. You see yep, families come up here. You see families come up here. Students come up here. Professors come up here. Our administrators, our staff, uh, community members. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you a little quick glimpse. Yeah, if you get to that center, if you could give us a good little 360, this is a perfect morning, Justin. I'll get close. There's a family already there. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Just give us a good little spin. Yeah, so we both have marsh and open water wetland. It's 20 acres of wetland that are created by the beavers, and uh, they're actually protected wetlands, DEC wetlands. I remember so a lot more people. biodiversity because of those wetlands. Right, I think that usually gets glazed over. A lot of us think, all right, natural areas has got to be forest, right? But the the sort of overlap and that in-between area where wetlands and forests kind of interact, that's where you see that biodiversity really come into play. I remember seeing a beaver swim right underneath that bridge while I was standing there and he just, from that top angle down, that's where I realized how big beavers can be. Oh yeah, they're huge, yeah. Whenever my students, get to see a beaver, they're always amazed at how big they are. Because most people will see little muskrats out there that are about four pounds, and they think they're seeing beavers, but it's actually just a different animal. Yeah, and that and during that October, <laughs> the fall is a good time for the uh, raptors to be flying by, so a lot of times you'll get hundreds of vultures that are circling around, and it's not because there's anything dead, it's just because they're, they love taking advantage of all the uh, the updraft, the warm updrafts of air that are around our hills. And you'll get ah. um, all sorts of hawks and falcons going through. We get a golden uh, eagle once in a while. Bald eagles. Yes, yes. This is the exact little interconnecting waterway to the, the marsh and then the, the large open pond area. Yep. And, I'm just and that line back, back there is the big beaver See dam. the other side. Yes, yeah, this is that marsh area, right, Dylan? Yep. Wow, Justin, excellent shots here. Yeah. Keep, keep us posted. I know you're on your, your way towards the other end, but, uh, yeah, let us know before you leave, all right? Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Justin. All right. All right. So when we're, we're thinking about this, it actually made me wonder, for all of you out there, again, another thing to throw in the chat, what type of – Animals, I know we hinted at a couple, do you think yep. <laughs> are back there in the nature preserve? Of course, while you're thinking about that, since we're on this picture in the front, there's a uh, Phragmites, it's an invasive species, and actually students go out there and they help me uh, remove invasive species. So a lot of students like to go out there um, and do physical work to get away from, you know, all the uh, mental work and the... And the <laughs> studying and all of that. They like to go out there and use their hands. Yeah, that's a great way to sort of reconnect and, and feel maybe a little bit more empowered as well as maybe in this case, humans really do see their part as being a part of nature and helping to balance it out and provide our own physical impact back there in a good way for once. And yeah, and even though it's a nature preserve, we actually, we probably actively manage almost all of it just because since it is surrounded by urban environments it is always heavily influenced and so there's a lot of invasive species there's things that we actually have to try to um, actively manage and we also try to create or at least maintain uh, open field habitats and shrub habitats as well so it's actually a lot of a lot of work out there to, to keep it preserved and actually to encourage um, biodiversity try to get as many animals as we can out there. Yeah, and I'm seeing a lot of good guesses coming through. Some of you, you know the Northeast quite well, it seems. So some of the, 
the animals that we have a guest as being a part of the nature reserve, deer, raccoon, fish, frogs, birds, badger, beavers, and muskrat. Yes, we, yep, Dale and I know mentioned that. Geese, ducks, squirrels, salamanders, and turkey. Definitely there's some salamanders. And then a question on black bears. So Dylan, yeah. what, what, what do we have? What are some of our, we could go from largest to smallest or however you want to go about right. what, what some of our critters and animals and creatures back there. Yeah. There, I mean, there's always a lot of questions about the large animals. So um, we do have pretty much every mammal that we can have out there. Uh, they at least visit. So black bears, we're just a t- tiny part of their territory as, as big of a property as we have. We're just a fraction of, of a black bear's territory. So there's probably a male and two females that visit our property. And usually in the fall and spring, when there's a certain amount of food there, um, you got to be real, real, really good to actually find a black bear, though. <laughs> most most people won't see them. The black bears will be aware and they'll kind of leave before, before we see them. Um, we get coyotes in there. We get two species of foxes, the red and the gray. Of course, we have lots of deer out there. Um, the only animal that I haven't seen personally out there is a bobcat, but they must at least visit. And uh, we don't actually have badgers, but we have the, the the really cool animal that's in that family is a fisher, which is a three-foot-long weasel. And What's amazing is that you actually have a chance on our campus to see a fisher. Usually they're pretty elusive, but we have one that has made campus a big part of its home. And uh, a lot of people see it. It's amazing. And uh, I even got video of them. They're really neat animals. And they, they hunt porcupines, which we also have out there. Maybe we all the way down. mascots of fishers now. It's <laughs> right, yeah. It's, it's kind of close to a bear cat. <laughs> yeah. In fact, my students... A couple of my, my class was out there and they saw one and one of them said it looked like a bear. And another one said it looked like a cat. And at the same time, we all looked at each other like, hey, is that a bear cat? <laughs> um, but then all the way down, we have a couple species of fish out there, the uh, um, catfish and sunfish. And then uh, lots of birds. So we've, we do a lot to encourage birds out there and over 200 species have been spotted out there they don't all nest there but they use it in their migrations they visit when they when there's uh food out there and then we have probably up to um we usually have about five but up to seven species of salamanders and a few snakes we don't have any venomous snakes but um we have some really neat ones out there from the water snakes to uh smooth greens if anybody knows their snakes, they're really neat. And a few frogs. We've just, last year, someone brought in uh, bullfrogs. So we actually have bullfrogs now. Didn't really want them, but now we have them. <laughs> well, the, you know they're there, right? You can hear them, right? <laughs> yeah, this is the first year that I've seen and definitely heard um, bullfrogs. But we have green frogs and pickerel frogs and uh, wood frogs and the little spring peepers that will make you deaf in the springtime. <laughs> so you're going to see the whole range there. And I think probably the most apparent, uh, most visible on a continuous basis in probably all of our natural areas, not just the nature preserve, are are the deer, the white-tailed deer. I always like to just get a, <laughs> an idea of what you all think as students. How many deer do you think reside on Binghamton University's campus or use it as part of their, their area, their territory? I think a couple people know. <laughs> yeah, it looks like some of you have done your research, or maybe you're from the Binghamton area and you know this. <laughs> <laughs> that last, um, probably a much higher number, probably a much higher number than we should have is a good is a good start there. And 2,000 deer was one of the guesses. And if there were 2,000 deer, we need to start charging them tuition. Um, <laughs> but, yes, just about 200. Some of you got that about spot on. Am I right, Dylan? Yep, yep. We had a, a peak at 260. So, I mean, our, our preserve is a nice place. They love it. Um, it's a little too many, of course. Um. 
but yeah, I, I actually like the guess of 2000 because when people do, um, regular scientific, uh, studies out there on the deer, it'll seem like there's thousands and thousands of them. They actually have the impact of much more than even they yeah, are. Can, now. can you explain it? I know that's always been sort of this odd controversial topic, right? Deer, they're just a natural part of the, the, the natural environment of the Northeast. You know, how can there be so many? And, and what is the impact of having so many in, in a confined area? Uh, it's actually one of the threats to our forest up there. Um, we should have around 15, maybe. Uh, we have two, but having around 200, they don't really allow the forest to regenerate. Uh, and we lose a lot of our under, actually all of our understory on our campus. Um, so it's actually a, a, a topic of controversy. It's a topic of, um, it's a problem that we all have to solve out there. And the reason we have too many deer is there are no, you know, we don't have any large predators like cougars or wolves out there. Um, we do have bears and coyotes, but they don't really diminish the population all that much. Um, and of course, the deer, even if they run out of food in the in our property, they move out into the neighborhoods, they move onto the campus itself, and they can always find food in the lawns and in, in the uh, plantings and things like that. So that kind of keeps their population artificially um, inflated. Got it. Because of that protection of the natural area, they actually have some good food sources, although probably getting it down to the bare minimum when it comes to the winter time, correct? Right, right. Yeah, and this is a problem everywhere around the whole world because humans don't really get along with predators as well. Hmm. But the herbivores, when they are freed from predation, they, they explode in their populations. And, and I know that's been uh, an area of research and analysis, but done by students and faculty, just as you mentioned, seeing where the understory disappears, that's one of the necessary pieces for a forest to maintain itself. And one of the biggest benefits of having this nature preserve, besides being a place to connect and keep the world as it grows, as it should be, and it's a gigantic carbon sink, right? The carbon sequestration that happens through a forest and a wetland um, and meadows it is in incredibly important, especially as we enter this tipping point stage and beyond the tipping point stage in society to bring carbon out of the atmosphere and store that. A forest that can regenerate itself, though, is incredibly important. So, yes, we love our deer and we love wildlife in general there on campus, but it's something that we're keeping an eye on and finding ways to make this a little bit more sustainable in the true sense of the word. Justin, hey, I see everybody. you're tuning back in, so let's let's bring you up on uh, the full screen here. Yeah, so just wanted to uh, just quickly as I ended my ended my hike, I left the uh, nature preserve. I just wanted to show everybody, um, just for example, right at the end, pretty much of the pond trail, connecting, and I'll do another 360 in a minute. Uh, you know, just connecting two of our uh, residential communities. So I just passed like two different groups of students. I passed a few other people taking a jog, as I was, and as you see, this is College in the Woods, one of our, our popular uh, residential communities, literally College in the Woods, as you I see. I see those connected. woods, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then going on, and then in the background there, of course, as you see uh, the library and the tower and everything, you also see, uh, probably in, in a little background, you see Mountain View Community, another one of right. our six uh, popular li uh, living, learning, residential communities. So, And this little right here is just one of these areas where you'll find a lot of different groups, um, especially from the two uh, neighboring communities and more will do different outdoor activities. And of course, I'm literally just a hop, skip and jump over from the nature preserve. So I just want to show this sign just to once again, show how on, uh, on top we are with uh, the importance of safety for everybody. Oh yeah. You got to keep your masks on, of course. Right. <laughs> but yeah, no, we are plugging along, you know, with the hand that's been dealt, we're doing really well. And uh, our students, once again, have a, have a direct connection uh, to nature and to everything that's there um, in the nature preserve, very, very close to the, the neighboring residential community. So as I ended my hike, I just wanted to uh, just show everybody that real quickly. 
You're giving me great flashbacks here. I used to live between Mountain View. I lived in Mountain View College, one of our communities, and College in the Woods. So thank you for showing this, Justin. I'm glad you no got problem. to go hiking today. No problem. Like I said, I, like Craig was mentioning earlier, I've been working at Binghamton for six years. Uh, one of my favorite spots, um, not just to, you know, not just to jog or take hikes or sometimes just to walk around, collect my thoughts, um, you know, for lunch breaks or something like that, is, is the nature preserve. Just to walk in the many trails that we have. I think it's, what, 12? 12 or 13 trails or something like that yep. um, that, that connect the whole yeah, nature reserve. Just, just a really, it's just, I don't know. It's just room to breathe. Um, this is not a massive campus where you feel like, you know, you, it takes a half an hour to get from one part of the campus to the next. So everything is so interconnected, but it's still room to breathe. You don't feel like you're on top of people. You don't feel like it's, it's a situation like that, um, especially in times, you know, like these. So um, just, just once again, happy to join the session, happy to share everybody some little clips and views. Um, my little, uh, you know, kind of amateur panoramic views. I'm not, not a filmmaker anytime soon. I like, I like movies, but not going to be a filmmaker anytime soon. But once again, Dylan, uh, Craig, all the group, everybody that share with us, wherever you're coming from. Uh, once again, everybody stay safe, healthy, and I really do appreciate you taking the time this morning um, or night or wherever you are, even the next day to spend time with us here at Binghamton University. So, Justin, get as much fresh air as you can. I know we're going to have to start reading applications soon. So thank yep, you. Yep. No problem. Thank you. Take care, Enjoy everybody. the rest of your day. Take care. You too. Thank you. Great job. Thank you, Dylan. All right. I'm going to bring that screen back up. I think this is a good time before we jump right into questions. We have another 10 minutes so we can do some questions. Um, I, I want to make sure that, um, that we just touch on what Justin mentioned, this idea that you can embrace the outdoors just on your own for a hike, for a run, a walk, just – to meditate out there in nature, just to walk around and explore. Maybe you want to do this more from an academic level, which for sure we have many different research opportunities, preservation opportunities, um, just the study of the natural worlds and the ecosystems, and then humans and our interaction with those ecosystems, how to develop sustainable communities in the long run. But I, I do want to touch on, we have an outdoor pursuits office. So it's part of our recreational activities we have the East Gym, which is a student rec center. In there, there's the Outdoor Pursuits office where you can take out equipment like snowshoes, kayaks, and go white rider kayaking. We plan some trips for that. Mountain bikes, um, a lot of different equipment and opportunities to embrace what the Northeast has to offer. But Dylan, I, I know you. There's a there's an outdoor there's an outdoors club, correct? Right. Yeah. There's a student run outdoors club and. Uh, they they do a lot of stuff away from our campus, but sometimes they work um, in the campus as well in our nature reserve. But they do a lot of hiking, especially in the Adirondacks and the Catskills and other places off campus as well. And actually, Broome County has a lot of nice parks in it as well, from yeah. natural area type parks to other recreational parks. There's definitely a lot to explore. I remember even after I graduated and I, I was sticking around in the area, I was uncovering new parks and little waterfall areas all over the place. So certainly a great spot to explore all this. For everybody tuning in, this is an opportunity to ask any questions or thoughts you have while we have Dylan here. Any any questions you have about our, our natural areas, um, the nature preserve, how to get involved. Yes, we do some outdoor classroom opportunities, especially now, but this is an opportunity to be out there and, and learning together as a collaborative campus. And our specific nature preserve is, is kind of limited to passive recreation. So um, it's mostly jogging and, and uh, hiking wildlife watching, birding, that type of thing, for, as far as recreation goes. Yeah, that's a good point, right? This is not... This a lot of people wonder, we don't really allow camping out there because of the, the bears and fires. <laughs> um, and then there's there's no biking out there either, just because the the, uh, the land is actually pretty fragile, and so it erodes very fast on our campus. But there's other places, other parks and things that allow a lot more um, mountain biking and things like that that are close by. So our preserve is really that. It's a, it's a nature preserve, trying to keep as much biodiversity as possible for a lot of research and academic opportunities for students and, and allowing them to go out there and find peace. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I think this is a good place to, to passively, as you mentioned, embrace nature and explore nature. And certainly for those of you who are big outdoor enthusiasts and maybe are mountain bikers or, and you like to maybe do other activities that are a bit more active in the natural setting, there are certainly many areas in the, in the surrounding Binghamton area that you can do so. A lot actually come through that Outdoor Pursuits office too, where they'll plan trips locally where you can do that with a good collective of other students. That's a good point to bring up, Dylan. All right, I'm gonna give you an opportunity if any other last questions come through. Um, I wanna, I'm gonna share my email with you also in case you have any thoughts and questions that come up over time as you're exploring. You certainly can bring that through to us. Uh, and I, I certainly want you to see just one of the many aspects of Binghamton, the Nature Preserve, though, being one of the most, in fact, it's probably our largest single aspect, and you really think about it from a, a size component of Binghamton's core here. And, and we know that we're in sort of a, a fork in the road where we have to make a decision as a society of what we can do to not only sustain what we have, but to, again, to get into more of a regenerative school of thought to, to you know, rebuild and, and input back into the world in the reciprocity standpoint of understanding our impact as humans and understand where we can make a positive impact on the world that we live in. And the nature preserve, as much as it is preserved, I think it's a, a, a launching pad for that thought to understand where we are, to understand where our impact is as humans, and then to go forward from there. So if at the, at the baseline level, it's a seedling area for you as students to sort of explore and think about where you can go from here. And of course, now that you've met Dylan virtually, uh, you'll know who he is when you see that expert out there on the trails, taking, taking stock, taking notice of what's going on. Always feel free to ask him a question, see what you're looking at. And he's, he's our, our steward of the natural area that will be able to at least point you in the right direction. You'll you'll find it if you find me out there, and if I can point out some animal, you'll find that uh, that's my favorite thing to do is to answer questions out there and try to point out neat things. Yeah, thank you for joining with us today, Dylan. I know you probably wish you were Justin out there on the trail today, and you're probably <laughs> going to head up there not long after this. I know this is a great fall weekend, so. If you have an opportunity ever to get up to campus, let us know. Oh, and Justin, Justin nice. came back. All right. I'm going to bring you up, Justin, because it looks like you have something. Oh, this is, oh, yeah, this is giving me a, a nice flashback, the Nature Preserve <laughs> sign. Yeah, just, just as we all signed off, just wanted to just sort of flash that and say bye once again. Thank you for showing this, Justin. Yeah, this is one of my favorite spots. Justin, just flip around real quick. I think what Mountain View is right to you behind you yep yeah my old dorm area that's and people going out for a run excellent shot yeah this is uh right where nature reserve meets rest of campus perfect yep. perfect ending spot here thank you justin if anybody interested in the apartment communities there you are right there hillside susquehanna right 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 in front of you yeah for upper class students right on the top of campus we have apartments that also touch right into the nature preserve on the way to our student-run farm called BU Acres up on the top. Excellent. Couldn't, Thanks, couldn't, leave, it up that, couldn't leave it up that quick encore. Everybody take care. <laughs> yeah, bye. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. If you have questions, I'm going to put my, my email in the chat and look forward to working with you. And if I, if I can't answer it, I'm going to send it towards Dylan, and I know he can. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your, <laughs> enjoy your weekend. And good luck with your college search. Yes. Maybe yes. I'll see you luck. here. Yeah, good luck with your applications. Dylan's waiting to see you come see the nature preserve. Take care. Thanks you for joining us, Dylan, and thank you, Justin. Bye everybody.